many times have people assumed you're good at math just because you wear glasses? Asians. They pack light, travel efficiently, and they got a thing for slip-on shoes, God love them. That's racist. Unlike my mother, I stereotype. It's faster. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 stereotypical movie characters. Cool Asians, varsity jocks, unfriendly black hotties, girls who eat their feelings. For this list, we've combined the most popular misconceptions, stereotypes, and tropes about men and women of different races and sexual orientations. I am an active member of the Student Activities Committee. I would say, yeah, I care. Wow, Damien, you've truly outgayed yourself. If you feel a movie is judging its characters a little too harshly, then chances are it made our list. So sit back and don't feel offended if you identify with any of these. Be gentle. Okay. Number 10, The Sexy Foreigner. James, you're very good in the world history class, yes? Women in film go crazy over foreigners, especially if they sound like James Bond or Javier Bardem. We'll eat well, we'll drink. Good wine, we'll make love. Yeah, who, who exactly is going to make love? Hopefully the three of us. Somehow, a lovely accent seems to work like magic, and these men always get the girls simply with their smooth talk. Female foreigners, on the other hand, are often shown to be very open about sex, especially if they happen to come from Europe. Strip. It's a Hollywood staple that characters who have an accent when they speak English are sexually aggressive. More, more. Whether they like it or not, foreigners have got that going for them. American girls would seriously dig me with my cute British accent. You don't have a cute British accent. Yes, I do. I'm going to America. Colin, you're a lonely, ugly arsehole. And you must accept it. Number nine, the materialistic woman. You think that's all I do? I'm just a debts with a credit card. It's one of the most common stereotypes Hollywood has created about the fairer sex. Show a girl a Gucci bag and she'll drop anything and everything. Bag. Gucci! And worth every penny. Credit cards are her best friends, and the ideal man will know how to choose just the right diamond for her. Just to be clear, this is a ring with diamonds, not a diamond ring, right? Not to mention, the mall is like the best place ever. I have got an idea. Let's blow off 7th and 8th, go to the mall, have a calorie fest, and see the new Christian Slater. Yes! For movie women who fall into this trope, the size of a man's wallet is what matters most. Material girls, indeed. We may be closer to Earth, but we kept a little bit of heaven. Number eight, the neurotic Jew. I'm not Jewish. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Woody Allen's to blame for creating the neurotic American Jew trope, who's just never satisfied with his life. Well, it ruins it for me if you have grass, because, you know, <clears throat> I'm like a comedian, mm -hmm. so if I get a laugh from a person who's high, it doesn't count, you know, because they're always laughing. Hypochondriac, stingy, and deeply intellectual. Jewish people in film who fit this stereotype also never stop talking. You, you like New York Jewish left-wing liberal intellectual Central Park West Brandeis University with the socialist summer camps and the, the father with the Ben Shahn drawings, right? And the really, you know, strike-oriented kind of... Uh, I'm stopping before I make a complete imbecile of myself. They see a shrink about three times a week and still can't resolve their mother issues. Why don't you go out with other women? Well, I, I tried, but it's, you know, it's very depressing. Even in modern movies, Jewish people are still just as neurotic, and their anxiety is used for comic effect. Oh, you curly oh, hair. Oh, 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 oh. Do you like using product? No, that's, uh, I use a Jewish call. But to be honest, Jewish characters have self-deprecating humor down to an art. Through every movie with Jews, we're the ones getting killed. Munich flips it on its ear. We we're captain mother. Not the killing, but fucking like taking names. Number seven, the immigrant convenience store owner. Hey, hey, you, how many times I tell you? No shirt, no service, get the hell out of my store. Somehow, all convenience stores in movies are run by people who are new to the country. And more specifically, they're likely Indian, Pakistani, or Korean for whatever reason. No dogs allowed, my friend. They speak heavily accented English and are usually quite talkative. Oh, my floater, I work at Harlem, Chinatown, Hunts Point, Coney Island, Red Hook, Hell's Kitchen. I don't give a shit, I'm a floater. Although it's an undeniable stereotype, when this portrayal of immigrants appears on film, it's usually to show social inequality between different classes or to highlight discrimination against such races. And won't you give my homeboy a chance? I don't want any trouble, just get out. 
can't stand y'all. Other times, however, their background is clearly used for comic effect. Roshan, you came to the right place. We have Ginza, Sheik, Hot Tamale, Booty Call, Backdoor Man, Manhandlers, Remrod, Loop Job, Indeep, Joy Trail, Buckwild, and Goodyear Eagles. Oh, snap. Goodyear got a condom, too? Non-skate, Macri Tread. <laughs> Just give me the Sheik. No offense. Number six, the wise old Asian who's actually really mean. <laughs> <laughs> Like Indians, Asians in film have only a handful of roles. They're either store owners, geniuses, or wise old men. They can also be extremely rude and heartless. Uh, I don't get this at all. I thought little pants. Shut up, Mr. Button. For some reason, those that fall into the wise old Asian man who's actually very mean category never smile, unless it's after they've humiliated someone else. <laughs> Somehow, the mean Asian man is always right, and his rude behavior is warranted by his wisdom. This stereotype can get even more off-putting when said Asian characters are portrayed by white actors with tons of makeup. You cannot go on or keep ringing my bell! You disturb me! You must have a key made! But it won't do any good, I just lose them all. Number 5. The Italian-American Mobster Luca Brazzi held a gun to his head. And my father assured him that either his brains or his signature would be on the contract. Don't get us wrong, some of our favorite movies ever are about the Mafia. But we'd be lying if we said that these films don't also give birth to a stereotypical image of Italian-Americans. Well, tonight we were out late, we took a ride on the, out to the country and we hit one of those deers. That's where the blood came from, I tell you. They're all family guys who love their mama first, pasta second, and cannoli next. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli but they all make dirty deals for a living. One of the main reasons this portrayal is so popular is because Italian gangsters are just so likable. So now I'm coming around, you know, I start to come out of it. Who do I see in front of me? This big prick again. He says, oh, what do you want to tell me now, tough guy? I said, Ming, what are you doing here? I thought I'd tell you to go f your mother. <laughs> Number four, the funny minority. Good guy, you all. It ain't you all, it's y'all. Y'all. Yo! Yo! You sound like a karate movie. Yo! Yo! Do you ever feel like Hollywood comedies just can't seem to find a place for characters from minority groups except as sidekicks? <laughs> Even when they are the leading characters, their racial background is usually used to pump up the laughs. Ever touch a black man's radio, boy? You can do that in China, but you can get your ass killed out here, man. For some reason, they just can't be taken seriously, and often they don't even try to. You know, you don't have to be embarrassed if your dick gets hard. But your dick is supposed to get hard, see? That's the whole object of this. Also, minority characters are often used as the exotic friends of the main non-minority characters. I, I want to give a toast. I love all of you so much. <laughs> You're my best friend. Uh, the best friend anybody could ever ask for, <laughs> except for you. Benita, I don't like you. Number three, the over-the-top gay man. Starina won't go on. She's just stealing her role. Oh, damn. And I, I please, I don't know what happened this time. Don't get us started on gay men in Hollywood films. Fabulous doesn't even begin to cover it. The traffic was unbelievable. Senator Keeley, Mrs. Keeley, I I'm so happy to meet you at last. While it may not always be true to real life, the movie men who fit into this stereotype love fashion even more than materialistic women do, and are likely even more sexually liberated than the European ladies we discussed earlier. Listen, one other thing. Can you switch off uh, the television? Because no. I made a fuss and I'm on the verge of buying Mr. Margorium's Wunderbar Emporium. Not to mention the over-the-top gay man's love of pop culture and theater. Their way of life alone seems inspired by a Broadway musical. Give my regards to Broadway, remember me to Herald Square. And of course, of course, they have perfectly coiffed hair. Always. Do you think the glasses are too much? Yeah, I'd lose them. They're too much like, look at me. Hey, everybody, look at me, look at my glasses. Number two, the ethnic terrorist. Let's put it this way. Terrorists in most Hollywood productions are not American. Do you know why you've been brought here? So that this man can verify to the world that Crimson Jihad is now a nuclear power. 
Whether fueled by Cold War mentality, modern-day conflicts in the Middle East, or some other motivation, certain ethnicities are always portrayed as violent criminals. When our enemies run and hide in fear at the mention of our name, and America begs our forgiveness on that great day of deliverance, you will know what I want. Their motives are unreasonable or unexplained, yet the terrorists are always capable of executing complicated attacks that almost always thwart the good guys' plans. Due to the Nakatomi Corporation's legacy of greed around the globe, they are about to be taught a lesson in the real use of power. You will be witnesses. But in the end, the ethnic baddies are always punished by the brave American heroes. Happy trails, Hans. Before we reveal our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. So if that's that, then we can do this. And that's Schrodinger's paradox, right? Is the cat dead? Or is the cat not dead? What's the matter with you anyway? I'm not very bright, I guess. I wouldn't say that. Careless, maybe. No, just dumb. If I had any brains, I wouldn't be on this crummy train with this crummy girl's band. Mr. Radcliffe is checking out of 709. Mr. Greenwald is checking in. He's back on the wagon, so let's clear out the mini bar. I just feel like I'm excited and I feel relaxed and I'm ready to party. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Number one, the codependent woman. I was going to live a life where my major relationship was with a bottle of wine and I'd finally die fat and alone and be found three weeks later, half-eaten by wild dogs. People raised on 90s rom-coms will know this one. There's a difference between being romantic and being totally desperate. Just because someone is looking for a nice guy, it doesn't make them desperate. How about rapacious and love star? In movies, however, even savvy, intelligent women are ready to put their careers on hold the minute a handsome stranger walks into their lives. I'm gonna be alone! So blinded by love are they, it doesn't matter who the man is or where he comes from. We guess their choice is validated if the men happen to be sexy foreigners with charming accents. Brave are simply those with the clearest vision of what is before them. Glory and danger alike, and notwithstanding, go out to meet it. Do you agree with our list? Which movie stereotype do you think is most common? For more top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. That was wonderful. I love being reduced to a cultural stereotype. Right, I'm a bigot, you know, but for the left.